How do you view delicious people? So, here's the thing. I wasn't planning on reviewing episode 4 right now, right at this moment. Uh, immediately I was going to sit in my bed and just fall asleep uh, for this foreseeable day because that's my usual routine. And so all of a sudden, of course, before I was to eventually rest my head, I was like, hey, is there anything new that came out today? Like, is there any new episodes that came out for certain shows that I've been watching? So I've kind of been looking at certain things to just be like, okay, when are things going to be back on? Or when is there going to be a next episode of this? And so all of a sudden, while I was minding my business, almost ready to just doze off, all of a sudden I went into to Disney Plus and realized there's another What If episode. I'm like, oh, God, like... I'm going to need to watch this, and then immediately I'm going to have to need to review it. So, uh, hopefully I can get this all right, because uh, really, uh, they've, one, uh, consistently gone back to this same old trope. Like, what ended up happening towards the end of Agent Carter... Bizarrely just consistently continues to happen in a lot of these what if series is where they keep uh, bringing up this Garath character that I mentioned in the Agent Carter episode where I'm like, maybe this is this character. Um, and so it seems like they can't they keep bringing this character up for whatever reason, this this giant octopus of a character for some reason, are they going to make a movie out of him? Is he going to be somewhere in the MCU somewhere, this actual character that we're actually going to see beyond just tentacles? Because they bring him up so freaking often in every single one of these What If episodes. But, anyways, I actually do thoroughly enjoy this what if episode it feels actually like something original and plus also like Stephen strange in his magical ways like i actually liked this episode like there is a whole thing where i don't feel like dr strange like on the also negative side I feel like Doctor Strange does the exact same thing regardless of how they supposedly slightly shift something in my Doctor Strange way of doing things. Like, it feels like if you tweak, like, one little thing and to say that, well, what is to happen if Doctor Strange loses his heart instead of his hands? Basically the exact same thing, but, like, it all depends on the end result of said thing that I honestly feel with the way Doctor Strange is going about his business lately in a lot of the movies I think he's going to create a destruction of the world either way so it kind of feels like either which way that Strange is to go about things it's leading him to almost annihilating the world upon itself so does this really tweak things? Does it really change much? No. Um, but it just makes for an interesting what if episode. So here is a thing that I would also say on the negative side of this episode. If you were to go into this movie called The Time Machine... That was done by uh, Guy Ritchie, I think. And has, of course, the guy who eventually is to actually become the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Uh, that time machine, that live action movie. You'll see that the thing that happens with the guy that has to forcefully make the time machine for that movie. Is to kind of have the exact same thing. That is to happen in Stephen Strange in this film. Just the concept of this episode and the movie The Time Machine feels exactly the same. Where, uh, where we reasonably have, 
I'll probably I'll probably have to get into it in spoilers. But if people were to have ever seen the movie Time Machine, they'll know where I'm going with here. And for people that haven't seen it, go and freaking check it out. It's actually a really good movie. Uh, it actually has a pretty decent cast also. Go on to an app called Yes Movies. Uh, yes Movies and Shows. And you should be able to watch the Time Machine fairly easily for absolutely free. You won't have, Unless there's an app somewhere that has it. Uh, that you can easily and quickly watch it. Go ahead and freaking watch your way out of it. Or watch your way into it. Um, you can also go into Fox HD movies. And watch both the Time Machine and What If also there. Uh, or on the Yes movie thing. You can watch What If there. If you want to not have to subscribe to Disney+. Plus. So... Now let's just uh, let's just tee it up, I guess. So this may incorporate some spoilers. So, but I'm trying to pull back as much as possible. But some spoilers might be in here. So Stephen Strange, who is to not quite yet be fully fledgedly Sorcerer Supreme yet is to eventually go through his origin, but hit, go through his origin in a different way, that all of a sudden Christine is to be with him when he is to be in that car accident. And so that is to eventually lead Strange to eventually become Sorcerer Supreme, regardless. And... But he ends up going and... Being Sorcerer Supreme to correct that car accident, to make it so that things in the car accident didn't happen that way. And so that all of a sudden leads Strange to desperately come up with a way to create, correct that whole thing that was to happen, that was supposed to happen. Having weird, goofy things here. So, all of a sudden, we have Strange, who you get that old kind of saying, power corrupts absolutely. And so, all of a sudden, Strange is looking for an infinite amount of power to eventually correct that little mishap. And that eventually is to cause for much interesting story which reincorporates characters like the ancient one it uh does some interesting things with wong technically and i think that is really all that really matters like i was actually hoping for there being some real true legitimate easter eggs coming from uh, this episode, where all of a sudden, if we're going to get some people that technically has some substantial power, maybe that would lead us to quite possibly Mephisto or somebody kind of ballparkingly in uh, the MCU. But I think they're still kind of leaving certain characters up to eventually be on actual movies or actual shows or something like that. Like, I think they haven't quite figured quite out yet how to write in Mephisto. And I'm like, God dang it! <laughs> you could do it easily in a Doctor Strange movie. But, or really just in um, an actual, like, uh, like if they're going to do Ghost Rider, freaking do it by now. Like, you could have, like, a Ghost Rider versus Doctor Strange film man would that be pretty sweet like have like ghost rider just coming in and having to collect doctor strange's soul that would be an interesting like battle of the titans kind of moment or something like that that would be a pretty interesting movie to eventually build up how important ghost rider now is in the mcu and plus also like dude doctor strange has been like here for a long time and he's like He's basically, like, solved the riddle of Endgame where no one else could. 
So, what is Strange going to do here? So I think it's now that custom time to otherwise say it is about that time to go into spoiler time, spoiler time, it's about that time we can do spoil this episode. So, let's go into it. So, really just the beginning of this episode is to... Instead of having Stephen Strange drive off in his own and then lose his hand ability, where he has to go like this for a number of years, Stephen Strange is to eventually go on and drive uh, his way to this uh, to this ceremony to get this award with Christine. And so they go off and they get into the car accident, and Christine is to die. So, eventually, Stephen Strange is to go on to eventually become Sorcerer Supreme, eventually get the Time Stone, to eventually want to turn back time, and eventually try and prevent Christine's death. But here is the thing. I had seen the movie Time Machine. And so... I saw Stephen Strange going over and over and over and over again, trying to prevent Christine's death. Um, and immediately I'm like, okay, he's not going to be able to fix it. It's not going to happen. There's no way he's going to be able to correct this. And because I already saw the movie The Time Machine, and when I saw The Time Machine... Uh, the guy goes back because his wife is to consistently get killed. And I think she ends up getting, like, uh, ran over by this horse and bucky, or she ends up, like, dying in some manner. And then, all of a sudden, like, the guy was to eventually correct it, but then she was to die another way eventually. And... There is a whole entire reason for that, because if uh, the Time Machine's guy's wife would have survived, then this guy would have never built the Time Machine to correct, correct that whole thing. So, if Doctor Strange was to prevent Christine's death, he would have never became Sorcerer Supreme to correct that death, because you just can't do that. It's not a thing. And so basically, Doctor Strange, numerous times over correcting this thing, trying to prevent this girl's death, but eventually happens anyways, like, there is no way that he can correct this death. Go on and be Sorcerer Supreme, knowing that he should correct. So it's a whole time anomaly thing. And it should, like, cause, basically, the world to just explode upon itself. Or really, this strange should be hopping different worlds with all kinds of other stranges. So that way he can live a world where Christine t still exists. And and whatever character that could care less about Christine existing in it, because maybe he is to have a boyfriend named Phil, could live in the world of which this Doctor Strange exists. And then perfect symmetry of world. But I guess he didn't go into multiverse hopping, where like they just changed universes of all the other Doctor Stranges and or maybe Doctor Strange could have killed a other universe Doctor Strange because he only went through the time part of it he only tried to change the time part of it but he didn't go through the alternate universe Doctor Strange and I think that was a mistake but who knows? Maybe if you killed Doctor Strange from alternate universe, that would cause a huge rift. I don't know. 
Uh, but that's just my thought about it. Because I've seen that kind of thing where you see like the Jet Li movie, The One, where like Jet Li goes through and kills every single version of himself. And like there's no real rift in like it's not like the whole world's like close upon in upon itself because of what uh strange had uh, or what Jet Li had did so eventually the ancient one is to finally come to strange and just be like you cannot change this like Christine is going to die countless times over. You cannot do this. You cannot shift, change, whatever. It's going to happen regardless. It's always going to happen. Whether you try to, like, wrap her in bub bubble wrap and, <laughs> like, uh, and use all of your magic to keep her protected, she will always die. Some way, another uh, either a bad hot dog or whatever. It's kind of like the Supernatural episode where Dean is to repetitiously die and Sam is to try to play through the same day over and over again to try to save uh, Dean from dying. Same paradox to eventually the trickster is to say like, hey, like I pulled this whole thing off. Ha 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 ha. Look at me. So... Strange is to go to the Ancient One, and Strange is still stubborn and is still going to want to figure out how to change this. And the Ancient One is to use her magic to try and stop him some way or another. And so Strange goes back way in time to eventually find all of the lost books and is starting to eventually uh, thumb through all these books and eventually find uh, stuff about t time shifting and stuff like that. So Strange is to all of a sudden try and ask the big, massively powerful creatures to eventually just lend him a bit of power and, of course, none of the massively powerful creatures are just like, dude, I'm not going to freaking help you. Like, I, and so we have the Graf character, the octopus-looking character that I mentioned in the pilot episode uh, is to, like, appear here and not want to help Strange one iota. So Strange is like, oh, okay, so, you know what, if I can't ask any of the massively powerful characters for help, Maybe I should start small and work my way up. So all of a sudden the Watcher is to watch over what Strange is doing. And the Watcher is kind of like, you know what, maybe I should, in con maybe I should convene and just kind of like tell him that he shouldn't be doing this. And Strange is kind of like kind of feeling the presence of the Watcher, but like isn't exactly hearing him. But it is kind of interesting to see like the Watcher actually going like, Maybe I should step in here. Maybe I should try to reason with this part. But then, like, nah. It's his story. Like, I thought that was kind of interesting. I liked that. So, but anyways, so we have Doctor Strange who is to go through and start, like, one by one seemingly consuming a lot of these characters. And this, uh, considering this is a DC thing, and I'm going to mention this, like, there was this one... Um, Green Lantern character called Parallax, which uh, a lot of people would probably remember the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie, and Parallax would consume uh, like certain things, like eventually consume people's fear. So Stephen Strange kind of consuming people in this thing kind of reminded me of Parallax in the Green Lantern movie. And so... We just start seeing Steven just, like, ghost trapping a lot of these people once they are to come in. And I'm just like, Steven Strange is basically a ghost trap. It just kind of looks like he, like, plops them out for just to trap them in and have them just be consumed. And you could start to see the rifts that are starting to happen with Strange, where his, like, 
skin is to become whiter, or his eyes are to become darker, or he has a new cape, which looks pretty sweet, right? Uh, he looks like Dracula-ish. It looks kind of cool. So, Steven starts to consume all of this stuff, and eventually you start seeing the drastic shift in his appearance, and it looks pretty freaking awesome. And so, Steven eventually just keeps consuming these things, things consistently keeps on just like becoming more and more massively powerful till I think to the point where he's basically immortal easily and he may not be a god but he's close to being one so strange is to eventually come back to that octopus like character and basically just be like well hey thanks for your non-help cuz slice and then he ends up kind of consuming part of this uh, thing for his own purpose. And so now we have to go into alternate strange. Um, oh, there was this one cool part where strange was to go to this place to get all these books. And he was to have this like Armani suit because of course he came from that time period of of back in the past where he's trying to correct the moment with Christine. And so we have this guy who keeps calling strange, like Armani, um, just kind of making a joke with him. But eventually strange is been figuring, trying to figure this out, uh, all this thing for so long that the guy who had sent him to where these books were gets old and dies. So, strange is to eventually comfort this guy while he's to die sadly enough so but he was also to offer him like hey man i could help you live forever and the guy is like nah, i don't want to live forever like man nah, this is like this is like death like death eventually has to happen for everyone so now let's go to alternate strange. So it seems that there is an alternate strange that anci the ancient one had concocted that didn't go uh, and use his power, just kind of went on and just kind of like uh, just had the infinity stone. It was just like, meh, like, I guess I'll just keep on living my life and just like mm, sucks that Christine is now dead, but I'm not going to do anything. And so all of a sudden Strange is starting to go like out and about and all of a sudden sees that the world is basically turning into this giant thing of like ink all over the place. And I'm like, man, isn't that freaking awesome? Like all of a sudden you really see that everyone is just all ink. And I'm like, isn't that like the smartest thing that you've ever seen in your life? Where, like, the, the whole world is all going back to its drawing board, which is a clear white page. Basically saying that all these people were ink and imaginary and whatever. And, like, that's what I think that the black stuff is coming from off of them, is that all of the ink is to all just fade away, which that's how I feel about this episode is it's kind of like a very meta episode where everything is to become undone and then everything is to be this white blank page at the end of it all. But that's not exactly how this episode is to break down. So the Ancient One is to come to uh, this world's alternate Doctor Strange to say that that Strange himself has caused this event, event to happen by putting together way too much power. Um, and so now this world strange will have to fight the darker, uh, or technically, let's just say it much more powerful doctor strange, even though in all actuality, it seems that when eventually they fight one another, it's not like doctor strange, like snaps a finger and the other doctor strange is to be dusted. No, it seems that, the other Doctor Strange starts to, like, come up with cer certain, like, game plans to eventually fight his own self. So, that leads to have both 
this alternate strange and this dark strange eventually go at the point of Christine's death and fight it out because they have to forcibly fight it out. And so eventually that still leads to have the Dark Strange consuming his alternate Strange. And then eventually one Strange is to try and figure out the magical way of bringing Christine back to life. It doesn't matter because eventually the world is to be inked away, so to speak. And when Christine is to be back into the normal world, her and maybe like a couple rocks are the only thing that really exists. And so now Strange is using his whole power, uh, his whole fingered power to eventually keep this whole world just together. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. This brings like the end of the world. Uh, like Strange is to wipe out everything because he wanted to save his woman. And like... But if you were a person that loved somebody enough, like, wouldn't you just be like, well, fine. You know what? Like, if if the world has to end for me to spend one more moment with the person I love the most, then go ahead. D just like, yeah, just the world be gone. But like, I had 10 more seconds with the person that I haven't been able to be with for X amount of time, even though technically he could have gone back in time and like spent a year with this woman because it could happen. Like, yeah, he might change a lot of things during that whole year. Like, and plus also the like, man, you look really old, strange. And it was like, yeah, I do look old, but, uh... <laughs> but yeah, like he could have pulled a freaking Captain America. He could have gone back in an earlier time and just spent some time with Christine and, like, kind of tried to make himself look younger because magic. And then he could have had to have left. Like, there was any moment where he could have just re-spent time with Christine that, yeah, would have played out the exact same way because it had to force we have to. But still, like, Strange could have had that time. But, again, it's still a cool thing that Strange would give up a world to have his woman back. And that is the big, that is the big thing for me. That was the coolest thing, was just that, like, you have a lot of characters that have lost, like, the one that they loved. Like, Wolverine has had that happen a lot, where he's lost Jean Grey, where he's lost... Uh, the girl that was to be his, uh, moon, and he was the Wolverine, but, like, eventually he found out that she was the trickster and he got played. And so on and so forth, but eventually she ends up dying anyways, and then he forgets about it. Cue up Origin, Wolverine Origins, if you've ever seen that movie. And eventually, like, Wolverine continues to lose every woman that eventually he loves because I think uh, the girl that he ends up being with, the Wolverine, eventually what happens in Days of Future Past, she ends up probably getting wiped out, right? So, either way, he loses all of his loves. He's never going to get Jean Grey. She's going to eventually die. So, <laughs> sadly enough. So... Anyways, yeah, there's a lot of people that eventually lose their loves. Uh, Star-Lord and Gamora, technically. No? Well, maybe. Yeah. Anyways, so... That is a big takeaway from this episode. Is, like, God, like, the power of love. The power of loving someone. Um, that would destroy a world. Which is so fascinating to me. And the thing that I enjoy the most about this episode is... Yeah, go ahead and destroy the world. But I'll get my girl for X amount of time. That is a great episode to me. 
Um, and also it's kind of cool to destroy the world to eventually just leave Doctor Strange in some like gem of a thing uh, at the end of this, which seems kind of like when Thanos was supposedly supposed to be into the soul gem or we were led to believe and that he was supposedly in there is kind of like what kind of happened here seemingly. Uh, but I don't know all the technical stuff. I know there's some scientist person that breaks down this whole entire thing is like, oh, well, Stephen Strange was exactly in this. And plus, scientifically, I could understand what happens in every single frame of this episode and so on and so forth. Well, good for that person, because there's always going to be an extremely geniusly smart person that is to, to know every little facet about, like, how a world would end exactly the way that this episode plays out. And he's like, oh my God, they queued this up for me. I know the exact thing of all of this is what's going on. Um, so yeah, so with that, this episode was really great. Um, but also it was just kind of like, okay, like, so he becomes Sorcerer Supreme regardless. But if anything, the slight tweak is, is that eventually he might become a evil Doctor Strange. Which is technically, like, when really looking at Doctor Strange, like, all of this is to be probably bound to happen regardless. That it kind of feels that Strange is going to continue to push the boundaries of power and really make a lot of stupid things like with his power because so it doesn't feel far-fetched for the like look at like no way home where all of a sudden he's to like put up a spell and probably gonna mess up some crap and so we're just gonna see the world eventually just in the mcu probably either restart or end because of freaking doctor strange we're gonna have some like doctor strange flashpoint moment where, or something like Flashpoint for the Marvel world, where drastically a ton of crap is going to get reset because of freaking Strange, I bet. I bet it's gonna, he's gonna go and do some something, and that is going to completely just drastically change the MCU to where we're just like, what, what the fuck? Like, what the f Strange? I didn't want this, M this kind of MCU. No, like, I want my MCU the way it was. And then people will be desperately asking for that. And then eventually they'll have to create some endgame event again where they go back to the same MCU that was done prior. And then people will just be like, oh, well, okay, yeah, we got our original MCU back, but now we have to start all over again. And, uh, <laughs> There is going to be some people, eventually, that are just going to be like, man, like, what are we doing? Uh, what are we doing with this, with this here? Um, but I think I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, thank you for being a part of this review. Thank you for watching on. Um, I would say that I really actually enjoyed this episode compared to all the others. But people might have drastic opinions. People might have said that this episode sucks compared to all the others. And I can probably understand that too. Because, like, this is to eventually create a destruction of a world. And also, this is to uh, also just create a thing where technically Strange still becomes the same person regardless of what happens. <laughs> So, like, it's not a drastic, like, he is to, like, go on and become, like, the pres president of the United States or something. Or he ends up, like, becoming, like, War Machine. Or he ends up becoming, like, Tony Stark or something. No, like, he just still becomes Doctor Strange, but a darker variation of it. So, with that said, uh... Like, I, I want to say if I covered everything or not. But there isn't much actually to cover in this episode either. So I think I covered most of this episode without really covering it. So, with that said, there might be some dialogue details that I didn't bring up. 
But other than that, I think I'm going to call this one a wrap. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.